learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I wanted to show you Carolyn's garden. I tell you, this year is doing much better than last year. As you can see, we got tomatoes just everywhere. Over here on the other side, we got cucumbers growing over here. We got watermelon sprouting out, beans and banana peppers or something. I don't, I don't like peppers, so I couldn't tell you what that is. So our little experimental garden that we started this year is just doing fantastic. Now last year, you will know that we started a garden and it didn't do well at all. So I trimmed the cedar trees over here, as you'll remember this last winter. So now we're getting a good eight to 10 hours of sunlight. So over here, I've said this a lot, we got all our trees over here. And then last year we had trees over here. Uh, you can see the stack of brush of the cedar trees that I still got laying here. We'll use that to burn, to, you know, start our fires this winter. That should be good and dry by then. Then this winter, I'm gonna clean, go ahead and clean the rest of this up over here. That way we can use all this for corn and we'll have a nice size garden next year so i thought i'd do a question and answer video i know i've been doing quite a few of those but it seems like i've got all my projects all caught up this year really we're just trying to enjoy the fruits of our labor get the chickens raised up get the meat birds raised this september october we'll we'll start canning again okay one of the questions is is uh do we have nesting boxes on our chicken coop here so you may remember that i built this chicken coop, oh, well, it was still cold when I built it. And I, I used this metal. The metal is very reflective, so it's, it stays pretty cool inside. A lot of people said that was gonna be hot in there, but it's not, it's, it's very cool. If you read, metal roofing material is actually used quite a bit because it's more efficient. So you can cool and heat it easier. Right here, we have nesting boxes. I got, what, four of them, maybe five of them there. Now, right now, it seems like all the chickens are sharing this one down on the end. I've been pulling grass off, off the ground, and I've been putting it in the nesting boxes. That way, they got something to lay on. The floor is made out of the same material as this is right here, this hardware cloth. Added this design later, after I built it. Originally, I wanted we had windows in it when it was still cold. So I put this plastic material that I used for the roof of the porch. This works out really well. Well, then it started getting warm. So then I put some more hard, I took that window off here and I put hardware cloth here for ventilation. So it stays really cool in there. And then when it gets cold, I got the plastic stored for this window over here. I'll just take the hardware cloth off and put the window back on. It's not hard, it's just a couple screws, pops right out. It's on wheels. The coop is so we can move it around. I've showed videos of us moving it around. I've got it hooked up now so we can actually tow it with the lawnmower here. So I got a little tow bar. But it's unlikely that we're going to move it much anymore. Now that we've got such a big operation, we'd have to move all these chicken runs. We've decided that we're just going to start putting leaves in here in the fall. That way the birds would get more food from the leaves and they would also. Uh, provide compost so we've changed our plans but that's the whole point of this whole operation the way i got it set up is that we can change our minds do something different and it still works i like the temporary permanent status of things if you can change it later without a lot of cost i think it's much better so about a month back i told you that we had a chicken that was acting a little funny maybe a little sick or something so we decided to segregate her but she was active sometimes and sometimes not active so we brought her outside and i made this a little makeshift pen that she could play in that way she wasn't just cooped up in the house all day i think they were called a plymouth rock or something chicken i forget what it was well she got loose so she came over to this area over here very tall weeds this is actually carolyn's blackberry patch wild blue blackberries i think of what we got here it's not like I want to cut this down because Carolyn really enjoys the blackberries. You can see some of them right here, I'm sure. Right there. But the chicken came over here and hid, and, and I found her one time. She came back out, made this little makeshift net on a handle, so I was able to catch her. Well, I put her back in the pen thinking, okay, I'm going to watch her and see where she escapes. Now that I got the net, I'll be able to catch her. 
Well, it was starting to get late in the evening, and I, I don't know, I guess I was just being stupid. She got loose again. Well, I couldn't catch her, and she came back over here. I guess she liked the berries. I don't know. Well, like I said, it was pretty late in the evening already, and I hunted around, hunted around. She didn't make any noise. She didn't move. But a lot of people have asked, did we ever find the chicken? And, and the answer is no. We never did find her. It, it was, it's, it's sad. I hate that we lost her. And the thing is, is Carolyn really liked that chicken. It was a pretty chicken, and it was friendly. It's unfortunate those things happen. But occasionally, you're just you're going to lose one, I guess, in farm animals. It's like feral hogs. You know, they always call them wild hogs, but they're not. They're feral. What happens is, is, is they get loose and then they become feral. But here, you know, the chicken probably got ate up by a fox or raccoon. And so the next question that I got was canning food. I've been just telling you we've been canning a lot of food and we're gonna can 250 pounds of chickens and our meat birds. But somebody asked me, are we ever gonna can hamburger or beef or anything? And the answer is, it's quite simple. We will can anything on sale or, or cheaper than normal or whatever the case is. But Carolyn and I don't just buy the meats that we like, or favorites or anything. We buy what's on sale. Hamburger hasn't been on sale forever. As a matter of fact, it was on sale a while back, and she didn't tell me about it, and unfortunately we missed the sale. We're big into porks and chicken and that kind of stuff, but even though all that is going up in price, which is, well, it's so nice that we're raising our own chickens now. Hopefully we can start reproducing our chickens next spring, if not, we'll go ahead and buy some more meat birds. This is a much cheaper operation than, than buying meat right now with, with inflation the way it is. I find it interesting how many well experts there are on YouTube in the comment section. Hundreds of them. Just everybody seems to be an expert on wells. <laughs> I get so much grief about this well. I don't understand it. Okay, so when we moved here, there was a hundred foot well here. It's a hundred feet deep. I, well, and, and the guy said that it was 130 feet deep, but after we put our pump down in there, we realized it's a hundred feet. So regardless, it doesn't matter. Now, I think the water level is at 70 feet. So there's 30 feet of water, six inches in diameter. Recovery rate is incredibly fast. I've tried to time it. If you empty it, you can get water back out of it within a couple minutes. I think it recovers completely full in 15 minutes. Really no way to tell uh, with my primitive techniques. Now, when I got here, it, we had a groundwater issue. Groundwater was getting into it. And so what I've done is I've put a well packer in it. I've got a new stanchion here. You probably can see the stanchion. So that is the new well liner. So that goes down inside the well casing. I've made videos on this. I think I actually have it in a playlist. And so I've got a well pump in it. The well pump is a three quarter horsepower pump. And it, this particular one pumps 15 gallons per minute. The one I had in it before I put the well packer in it was a 30 gallon per minute. And if you think about how, how much water that is, it's just incredibly fast. And so with the 30 gallon a minute, I was able to empty the well within a few minutes if I didn't throttle it down. And I've said this a million times that I can run the well off my 2000 watt generator or my solar panels. I have a 2000 watt inverter also. And somebody says you can't do that. Well pumps are 220 volts and, and went in all kinds of explanations of why you can't do that. So, you know, obviously the YouTuber is a big liar because you can't do that. Well, if you go on Amazon and you type in well pump, deep well pump, 110 volt or 115 volt, 120 volt, whatever it is, you can find them. I've actually got two uh, of these, the 15 gallon per minute, so I got my backup, and I still got the 30 gallon per minute that I took out when I put the well packer in. And I've ran them all off the generator, I've proven it a hundred times, you plug it in, water comes out. So yeah, you can, it's just you gotta search for it. I was actually surprised when I found it, uh, the 30 gallon, that was last year. Went to uh, Amazon, I t <laughs> typed it in. You know, my dad and I were talking about the same thing. How are we going to run this well off my limited amount of electric? Of course, you can get DC well pumps, all kinds of different varieties. So don't limit yourself is what I'm trying to say. But my dad and I were discussing it, and I got on Amazon, and I was looking and found it, and I sent it to him. He says, wow, yeah, I think that's the one you need. But it seems like no matter what I talk about when it comes to the well, 
somebody explains to me why you can't do it even though I am doing it that's what's so funny I am literally proving that it is being done now another thing they said you can't do is you can't throttle down the well pump and that's kind of true you want enough water going through the well pump that it doesn't get hot if you start getting what's called a dead head where water is stopped it's not moving very fast or not at all the pump will heat up and start steaming the water and so now you don't have water in it and nothing's keeping it cool but i throttled that mine down with just a regular hose valve and as long as you don't get this surge boom 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 in it you're not deadheading now i also about 10 feet down have drilled a hole you might be able to see this black pipe here down about 10 feet i drilled a hole in it so water is constantly spraying out of it so even if i do shut this off by accident i still got water flowing through it now the reason i drilled that hole is so this doesn't freeze that water will drain back down into the well emptying the pipe so there's no water in here to freeze so the only thing that could freeze is this hose and somebody asked me well how do you keep the hose from freezing well that's simple you just disconnect the hose you take it inside it doesn't freeze and then when you need it you got water coming through that it's at 60 degrees 50 to 60 degrees so it's unlikely that the hose will freeze while you're actually using it i hope i can inspire you to ignore the naysayers and do your own research so you can live your dream thanks for watching